Good morning. <laughs> How's everybody doing this morning? Good? Are you glad that the ice and snow is melted away? You realize that it's probably coming back again because <laughs> we say that. So <laughs> I hate to tell you, but that's just going to be the way it is. Every time Easter climbs down towards the end of middle of, the, middle of April to end of April, then you know there's going to be one more crazy snow that's just going to strike up somewhere. Uh, well now I'm really jinxing it. So, uh, But we are so glad that you're here this morning. Um, one quick announcement for the kids that are here, and I think most of them know that, uh, but we have a uh, confirmation meeting for parents uh, right after ch the church service. It'll be in the pairs and spares room, and then also uh, that'll include the um, mission trip afterwards as well, too, so you guys can learn all about that. So if you're feeling kiddish this morning, you can stop in on that, too, and uh, get yourself uh, going with us. But we, we have so many things planned for you this morning. I'm going to go ahead and uh, step out of the way here and let our uh, musicians take over and have our call to worship and uh, our prelude. And uh, good to see you this morning.
Good morning, church. Our opening hymn can be found on page 400, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. We will sing verses 1 and 3. Would you please stand? Would you please remain standing for our Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. At this time, children are dismissed to kids' own worship. Our prayer hymn this morning can be found on page 599, Break Thou the Bread of Life. We will sing verse 2.
Let me take just a few moments to share some of our uh, joys and concerns uh, together. Do we have any that we'd like to share this morning? Can't see you guys behind me, so. All right, if there are none, then take that time uh, here in just a moment where you can spend some moment silently with God and uh, talk to him, and then we'll uh, pray together this morning. Father God, we bring so many things before you when we come to you. And we know, Father, that what we say, how we pray, how we talk to you, that you hear us, that you hear our prayers. Hear those moments that we share just for you. Not to call attention to ourselves, but to bring ourselves before you humbly, lovingly, and with ears and hearts wide open so that we can hear your word. Hear what your ha word has in store for us. Share in those moments together. So much about life, Father, is getting to share in those moments with the people that we love and that we care about. So often, Father, what happens then as we get older is those people start to fall away because life is short. So this morning, Father, I pray, too, for those that that person that they loved or that family member that they loved that isn't here anymore. Give some comfort to them. Give some peace to them. And also, Father, give some peace to, and comfort to us as we bring ourselves before you. And as we come to you on this day and say the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Very pretty. Thank you, everybody. I love watching the people that can handle like three or four of those at a time. <laughs> I I would be the person that had the giant gong, like when you leave the Chinese restaurant to say you had a good time. No, that's about, that's about the best I could do. So you guys are talented. Thank you for sharing your gifts. Um, there's really a lot of ways that you can look at life and... Uh, Oftentimes, for everything, there's two different kinds of people. And just in general, there are two different kinds of people for what we're describing today. And there's the leader and the follower. Now, how many of you uh, would put yourself in the leader category? Oh, not very many. Surprising. In the first service, it was like more than half. Uh, okay. So the rest of you are followers? All right. How many of you are both? <laughs> there you go. Uh, leader, follower. The idea is, is that if you have certain gifts or graces or jobs and things that you do, sometimes you have to lead, but sometimes it's good to follow too. And we're going to read a scripture here, and I think it describes this really well. It's uh, in Deuteronomy Eight, and it's verses one through three. Um, don't, not often do we get a chance to go back, uh, especially into Deuteronomy. And so here's some writing from Moses as he was thinking kind of out loud and having God talk to him too as well. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Father. All right, John, if you want to go back to the beginning there. Yeah. So we've got these ideas that we've been talking about these last, oh, about six weeks, five weeks, six weeks. And we've been saying, here's God's voice, but here's a different way that we hear it. Now we're getting into uh, the last two here today and then next week uh, before we, we head into uh, Lent and East, uh, Easter time. And so I wanted to catch one of the most important voices of God, and the way we can hear him is through his mouth, through his word, right? Sometimes he will give you verbal things that you can hear, maybe just inside you, but often where he speaks to us is through, her, through his word, how we read it, how we share it, how we go about it. And so these first words here that he says is be careful now that's a warning thing right there right that's just a knowledge of be careful because here's what's coming after that be careful to follow every command i'm giving you today right in this instance and in, as we're uh putting ourselves with god and following god god asked a very simple question. And Jesus asked it of his own disciples when he came to them and he picked them and he said to them what? Follow me. That made them followers, right? But also they were leaders too in the sense that they took what he had and they tried then to share it with people and with the world. But think of how many times Jesus had to tell them, hey, you've got it all wrong here. And so here we're hearing this word, and it's be careful to follow every command I am giving you today. Now there's a whole lot in that first little bit. The carefulness, the following, the command, but also God is saying be careful to follow all this that I am giving you. That's the differentiation, right, is we have to be able to reach down deep inside ourselves and figure out if it's God talking to us or something else. Now, 
the something else in this instance is the one who wants to mess you up worse than anything else, and that's the devil. And we know from Scripture that uh, the Bible says that the devil comes as a ray of light, meaning not the way maybe we think that he comes. He's not going to be all red with big horns and whatever else, but he's going to come as something like light. Now, a ray of light, we know what that means. It's like a, a streaming part that comes in. You can see rays of light. There's little bits of them over there coming in through the windows. You see them in the morning, maybe through cracks and things in your curtains. Uh, we know what a ray means, but it means a part of the light is coming in. But we know one other thing more important than that. What does Jesus say? He says, but I am the light, and it's of the world. So we know who the light is, but the devil comes as a ray of light. And to think of it that way, uh, it's kind of like this. It's like uh, when I was in high school, I had uh, Mrs. Weissenberger uh, as a teacher of mine, uh, and she's passed on now, but uh, she was a great uh, teacher that I learned a lot from, an English teacher. Uh, you know I'd have to say that because my mom's an English teacher. So, uh, But Mrs. Weissenberger had one thing that she did that really helped me because I got to, as I got to college and seminary, I had more professors that did this. She loved to give the multiple choice test. Now, you teachers and educators in here, you know what that test is, right? There's the question and then there's four possible answers underneath it, A, B, C, and D. Well, we know that one of those is completely ir irrelevant, right? Sometimes even I had teachers that put little jokes in there, even just to see if anybody's paying attention and actually reading or just circling letters. So one that doesn't matter. Two, the second one, matters just a bit. It could be something, a part of what you're looking at. But the last two, there, there comes the hard part. They're very close, and both of them probably even answer part of the question, but one you can differentiate more for the question than the other. And you have to sit there and figure out, is it C or is it A? Is it A or is it C? Which one is it? That is like what we're talking about here is, God says, follow every command I am giving you. Not those in the world that are giving you a command. And here's the hard part. The devil comes as a ray of light. And so what does his command to you look like? It looks like something that could possibly be good. It could be something that might even be good for you or your family for a little while. And then it goes off the rail. Because what he wants is the same thing, to draw you in so he has you in his clutches and then he's going to take your world and rock it to the core. But he's saying to you, listen to me. Then you've got on the other side the good news. And Jesus is saying, no, remember I told you to be careful. I told you to follow me all the time. Every command I am giving you so that if you do that, you'll live and increase. And then here's the roughest part of this whole area. And may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. He's not saying you might enter. He's saying you may be able to enter, mentor, I don't know. It'll just depend on whether you listen to me and every command that I have, and if you follow me, and if you figure out whether it's me talking to you or somebody else entirely. And if you do, then and only then, you may enter, but you might not. That's a scary thing, right? Is we do everything that we can to try to uh, share God with others, to uh, listen to God in our lives and hear what he has for us. And then even then, just like he said to Moses, you have brought them this far to Canaan to the land of milk and honey, but you're not going to go in. Joshua's going to lead them in. What is it that God says to you? Come follow me. Don't listen to that over there. Come hear me and what I have to say for you. It's not just a ray of light. It's a direct line to me. And if we can feel that and know that, 
Then, uh, if you go on to the second part there, remember how the Lord, your God, led you all the way in the wilderness. So what's being stated now is, if you really follow me and you know what I'm doing, then we're going to go back on memory lane here just a short bit. Remember when we were in the wilderness? And we were wandering along and you guys were complaining about whether or not we were going to get to where we were supposed to go, whether we'd even see this land of milk and honey, does it even exist, all the different things that you complain about. Well, we wandered for 40 years and then we finally got there because I was doing that as a test so that I could see what was in your heart and my heart, whether or not you keep my commands. Why? Because be careful to only keep mine. So we did this wandering thing. You've done it too. You've probably had a period in your life. You may be sitting here and you may be 30, you may be 50, you may be 60, you may be somewhere in between, you may be 90, whatever the case may be, but you had a moment of wandering too. You wander until finally maybe you come back and God says, hear me. And probably along that way, you were a lot like the Israelites and said, I don't even know, God, where are we going? Are we not there yet? Uh, I can't take this anymore, you know? It's like the kids in the back seat. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And God says, be patient. Hear me. And all he wants is for you to humbly come before him so that he can see what's in your heart and mine. And would you do as he said? <coughs> if we go to the last part there, he humbles us causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known. Now, what does that mean? Well, we know what that means is they got to this certain part, and they were almost to the end, right? They were almost to the finish line, and they said literally that very phrase, you've brought us all this way, and now we're here, and there's no water, and there's no food, and we're going to starve, right? Right? And then what does God do? He brings water out of the rocks, but he does something even greater. He lets manna fall from heaven. I think maybe it was even gluten-free that came down out of the sky. If you've ever eaten uh, the idea of what manna is, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's harsh. <laughs> it's almost like those little wafers that we have to take for communion. <coughs> Just a little bit better. So the manna comes from heaven. They didn't know what it was because God created it just for them so that they could eat. And it came down in certain places and God said, take what you need for you and your family only and just what you need for that day. So they did. They drank from the rock. They ate from the manna from the sky and from the heavens. And they were fine for a while. <coughs> and then they did. What they always do. Okay, God, but what about that time that like you forget? Maybe you're like doing something else and the manna doesn't come in the morning and then we don't have anything to eat for the rest of the day. What do we do then? Should we take extra? And so then they fought over whether they could take more for their own family. Right? We know what that is. Those are those super couponers that have uh, 7,000 rolls of toilet paper in their home, 57 cans of corn. You know, why do you need those things? If that's any of you in here, I want to say shame on you, but I'm not going to because I'm your preacher. But go give that to somebody. <laughs> Have you ever watched that Super Coupon show? Oh, my gosh, those people are crazy. <laughs> if that is you, though, you are not crazy. You are loved. <laughs> but God says, here's the manna. This is yours. It's only for right now. Don't worry about the later. Live in this moment that I have for you. Oh, but I can't do that, God. I need to have it now. I want to have it now. You like my whiny voice? I have four kids, so I'm pretty good at that one. I could probably even get a little bit better if you wanted it. But he's trying to teach you and say that man doesn't live on bread alone anyways, but on every word that comes from the mouth of me. That's what you should live on. Not worried about whether or not you're going to have enough to eat or have enough to drink because I've already told you a thousand times you will. 
but knowing that it's coming from me. So when we're sitting there and we're complaining and we're thinking it's maybe not going to come for us or it's not going to be there on time or whatever, and we're thinking someone forgot, (coughs) God says, that's that ray of light. I am the light. Follow my light. You know those moments. We had one yesterday. We went uh, to Grove City to see... Uh, my nieces play basketball. I hadn't had a chance to see them yet, and they were down to their last couple of games. So we went to back-to-back games, and they were right during lunchtime, of course. So right afterwards, we went to uh, Smoky Bones. You ever eaten there? Um, if you're a Smoky Bones owner or <laughs> worker, do not listen to this moment. But we sat there uh, and waited for an hour and a half until finally we got our food and we ate. And we were thinking that we were just going to eat, having a little bit of time, and then we would go and meet the people from the church that were at the Nazarene church ready for the concert. Well, instead, (coughs) we got done eating at like 520, and we were supposed to be there at 545. That's how long it took. And I'll kid you not, I sat there and thought, now they're walking right past us, but did they forget that we had ordered something? Right? And even then, when they brought it, they still forgot Lisa's. The only good thing about that was is they didn't charge for leases. <laughs> but it was hard. I was hungry. I was hungry, you know. I got the little, the hangries or whatever they call it, right? You get a little hangry, don't you? There's some people in here that I bet you get a little hangry. I can see them. I know you, Willard. You got that hangry feeling. Uh, there's a couple other ones in here, too. I'm sure that you've got it. Uh, you're finding it in you. I like to pick on Willard because he always laughs. Uh, uh, but... You got that feeling, you know, and you think, what about me and my food? When is mine coming? And God says, again, listen to me because I am the I am and I'm going to do for you what I planned to do all along. And I got you covered. All you've got to do is hear me out and follow me. And we get to that point then where we say, okay, we'll do that. But what do we do in the meantime? And God says, again, when you're hungry, Come to me because I will give you the bread of life that will last forever. (coughs) And you will hunger no more. All you got to do, though, is listen to the words that come out of my mouth. Right? That's what he said to the disciples. That's what Jesus said over and over. Do you not see the words that are coming and hearing out of my mouth? I'm trying to tell you something. You don't listen. You go your own way. We read that in scripture. It literally happened again and again. I have people that come and they say, okay, John, if I want to believe and I want to know, then let me ask you this question. The disciples had Jesus right there and present with them and they screwed up so many times. How are we supposed to do it? And we don't have Jesus right there at all. I said, oh, but you do. You see, Jesus said to them as he left, I will leave another in my place. And you know where he put him? In you and in me. And the Holy Spirit resides in you. So it doesn't matter if you don't have Jesus right there and present because you do have him because he's in your heart. If you opened your heart to let him in. And if that's you this morning and you know for a fact that you're saved and you let Jesus into your heart, then if there's someone next to you that you think doesn't know that, help them with that. Come find me. Because that's how we hear. That's how we know what God wants for us. And so we come down to uh, Hebrews 4, 12 through 13. It's going to be right up there. For the word of God is alive and active. Because if you listen to the words that come out of God's mouth, he says, I am the I am, and that's all that I am. You don't need to worry about anything else. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered (coughs) and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So he's saying to you and to me, come before me I've got you covered 
And when I do that, you'll know this. You'll know that I am God. Why? Because I am. It's like the parent when the kids come and say, why? And they say, because I said so. But why? Because I said so. Well, that's like what we are. We say to God again and again, why, God? And God says, I am. And you say, okay, I, I know that. But in this instance, I feel like I didn't get answered quickly on time. And God says, I am. And then sometimes we get sidetracked. And the hard part is, is that ray of light, the prince of darkness, he's waiting for those slip-ups so that he can slide in and say, hey, he wasn't listening to you, but I will. And those are those moments that we sit and we think, wow, that sounds an awful lot like God. Is it God? Well, that's what we have to decide in our own hearts. And we know what that means. We hear it straight from the beginning. Jesus was born in a manger scene and the angels saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And when they sing, they say, and the glory of the Lord from the angels shone all around them. Right? That's all around you at this moment. That light that goes with you again and again. It's not just that little ray of light shining in through the window, but it's that bright spotlight. It's in you. And if you're doing it right, it shines out through you. It'll lead your way on the path because you're following him. But you know what else it does? It draws attention to you so that others will come to you and say, what's different about you? Now, if someone comes and asks you that, don't just say, well, I got a haircut last week <laughs> if you don't have any hair you got to use another excuse but I did this or I did that because what they're really asking is is what's different in you that I don't have I can see it on you I've shared before that most preachers have that face not just that the mother can love, but also that when you see that face, for some reason we project this idea, you can talk to us. I don't know where I am, whatever I'm doing, there's always going to be somebody that's going to come up and they're going to tell me something, and it's going to be something personal about their life that probably I didn't need to hear, but they wanted to share, and they want to hear what I have to say about it. That happened to me last night. We went to the concert uh, for Phil Wickham, uh, the, it was a very great worship uh, concert for those that got to go. Um, if you didn't get to go, go the next time. It was a really fun time. Uh, but we were sitting there, and there was a man and a and a woman and their two kids behind us. And I just got to talking to him because I could hear that he was talking about Ohio State basketball, and I knew that Ohio State had lost, and so we were sitting there talking. And <coughs> then finally he started telling me some other things. And the next thing you know, he's kind of unveiling some of these things to me. And I listened. And then as the concert was over, he reached out because he was behind me and squeezed my shoulder and said, thanks. Good talking to you. And left. I don't know who that guy is. I don't even know if he lives in Grove City where the concert was or if he's from somewhere else like me. For all I know, he could live two blocks down the street from me i don't know but i know this for some reason he wanted to ask something and he did and for some reason i say to you there's going to be somebody that wants to talk to you and if we constantly push aside those that are around us by saying we don't have time we don't have space we don't have energy because we got to keep going right we got to constantly keep moving we can't just be still and God says that. Be still and know that I am God. But remember, it's again that I am statement. And what we forget is, we forget to follow. Right? You were the one probably uh, on the playground in kindergarten when they said, hey, let's play follow the leader. And you're like, no, I don't want to do that. 
But here God's saying, hey, let's play follow the leader. Follow me and I'm going to show you what it takes to bring people to me. And we should do that. That is definitely something that you signed up for when you said, I'm going to come to church and I'm going to give my time and energy to the church. I don't know how many people say over the years, especially here recently when times have been tough, hey, John, we're having a hard time right now and I really can't give tithe like I used to. And I say, but can you give? And they're like, no, I just told you that I can't really give it. I'm like, that's not what I mean. Because when you give of your tithe, it's an offering to God, but that offering isn't just included into the money that you give, <coughs> but to the time and the energy and the service that you give and your talents, those things that you're good at. And so if you're sitting here today and you're like, you know, I'm really good at this one thing and I've never told anybody this and it would really change a part of church. I could use it in church. Well, then tell it. It doesn't matter whether you're 90 or whether you're 40. What matters is, is that you're willing to serve and willing to give. And that's what church is. When people come through our doors and come in, because we're the church and not just a building, we have people there that smile and greet and say, hey, welcome into our church. But you know what else they should do? They should literally almost grab that person by the hand if they don't know them and say, hey, welcome in our church. Here's some coffee if you want to have some. By the way, the sanctuary is right over here. The bathrooms are right over here and there if you need them because if you're going to get some coffee, you know you got to go to the bathroom too. And you think about that. And of course, if John or I are walking by, it's like uh, we're at the zoo and we're jungle animals in the wild that are being pointed out. There's our preacher right over there and he's going that way. Say hi to him, wave. Don't talk to him yet though because he's only got five minutes in between services and he's trying to go to the bathroom, go into his office and then go back to the sanctuary. <laughs> but we're trying to explain these things. And here we are in the place where God says, follow me because it's not just coming here it's going wherever it is that he wants you to go somebody said to me the other day uh we're going to ever go back to having alkalites for the candles because of covid we had stopped doing those things actually some churches just had stopped doing them anyways because they didn't always have kids that could come and do it real fast but there's a reason that we did it because in the Methodist church, we actually talk about it. It's in each bulletin every Sunday too. We bring in the light and then the alkalites were supposed to go and take the light out as we go. Why? Because you're taking the light of Christ with you. If you don't, then the ray of light might be the light that you answer and not the light of lights. So on this day, February 20th, 2022. Can you believe on Tuesday that we're going to have 2-22-22? If you have to write a check on Tuesday, you're welcome for me helping you with that one. George, you would have had problems with that, right? You'd have had to take the shoes off. 2-22-22, that's what we're at. Right? But here today is 2-20-22. Oh, see, God's calling right now. Are you going to answer? I don't know whose that phone that is, but they're not going to pick that up. <laughs> they're going to say, I ain't about to answer that one. Let it ring. <laughs> Let, I, I, see, I can get sidetracked so easily. I'm reminded, though, of one Sunday that that happened. And uh, it, it was for one of my sweet little old ladies that was in church, and she was well into her 90s. Couldn't hear anyways. I don't even know why she had a cell phone. But it kept ringing and ringing, and I, apparently she had never signed to put a voicemail on it. So it just kept going. <laughs> and she just was sitting there until finally someone came up to her row and said, your phone is ringing. And so she answered it, and then uh, I had to sit like this as we waited for the next five minutes while she's like, I can't talk right now. I'm in church. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you are in church. 
She's like, yeah, well, the preacher's talking to me because I think I'm being too loud, but I can't hear her anyways. And, oh, she's just going on. We learned a lot about her that day. <laughs> but we can laugh at that, but at the same time, that's how we are. We get sidetracked. We get going so easy that we forget that God says, come follow me and do this. And that's really all you need to know. When you walk from this place and go to wherever it is that you're going, know this, that God says, every word that comes out of my mouth is for you. For the word of God is alive and active. And nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare. And it's before him that we must give an account of ourselves. And so as we close today, that account has to come from you. It's not going to be me that's going to stand there for you. It's not going to be someone else. It's going to be the account that you have to give. And you have to say, this is what I did. In that instance where I heard your voice, I did it. That time I didn't. Did it. Didn't do it. Did it. Might be a lot of didn't do it. Didn't do it. And we got to give an account of those things. I don't know what that'll look like, right? It's going to be some video that passes and God stops it and pauses and says, is it like I had a coach one time that said it's like uh, at the end when, you know, you are judged, it'll be like the coach that sits there and was like, what in the world were you thinking right there? That's not good. And you're like, well, I was distracted by this in life. That might be how it is. I don't know. All I know is the, that God says we all have fallen short. And because of that, we just need him. And he says to us, I am the light. I am the word. Follow me. Let me bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, as we come to this moment of closing today, may we know that you say to us, follow me, hear me, know me, hear my voice. I will feed you if you're hungry. I will give you drink if you're thirsty. But all you've got to do is trust in me. So I ask God that as we come and get ready to leave this morning. May we do that very thing. May we put our trust in you. Because we know. That that's where we should be. In the light. In the light of the world. Because your light. Will block out. All the other parts of darkness. So we come to you with that thought this morning father. And we give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn today can be found on page 577. God of grace and God of glory. We will sing verses 1 and 2. Would you please stand?
Lord God, may you grant us wisdom and courage for the living of these days as we go into these days. May you go with the God of peace and love and may his grace go before you so that you can bring others into the light. It was good to see you this morning. Have a good week.